Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you so much for checking out the episode. If you like what you see, you know the drill. Hit subscribe. We put out three new interviews every single week. Great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. Maybe like Julian Baker, who has got a, a brand new record on the way and a brand new single that we're already loving called Faith Healer. Hi, Julian. How are you? Hi, right, I'm doing all right. Um, hello from, you said hello from Louisville. Hello from Fall in Nashville. Um, fall in Nashville, right down yeah. the road. Yeah, very close. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I guess we want to jump right into the deep end here. And I, there's really no good way around it because you have this beautifully written bio that goes along with this brand new record. And, and there was a line that really stuck out to me uh, right from the beginning where it says, this is an album of songs of survival and reimagining a better self. And I feel like that's something that we all probably want to do. And if tw- if there's ever a time to do it, 2020 was probably a great time to work on our own self. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I hope you don't mind really just getting right to it. But what does that mean for you in this instance? Um, you know, it's crazy. You're t- you're talking about the Hanif bio. Mm-hmm. I feel like he, I love Hanif, and I feel like he. It's interesting because I wrote this record over the course of 2019 and maybe like a little bit of 2018 and it was a really difficult year like just for me personally professionally emotionally and but it's it's weird because i made this record and i made all these assertions about myself to see kind of like the furthest that i could go into self-examination being a confrontation of the negative things about me I was trying to hide, you know, or that I was trying to subdue or suppress or that were humiliating me and, you know, and uh, I really thought that this was like a very dark record. And it's funny hearing you isolate that quote makes, you know, when other people reflect your art, back to you and in theirs and you're like oh wow like I guess it is a record with a lot of songs of surviving and imagining a better self even if I think it's a pretty pessimistic record you know (laughs) well again I mean I feel like that's really what most artists strive for is to sure I don't know if you know self-analyzing is always a part of it. it it does seem like it's it's normally a part of it um there is that the first single of course that we're talking about with faith healer you you know um i'm looking at a a quote here and uh willing to believe whomever when they promise healing and i think that's what you did with another interview that you've done about this song and everything which was credited also in the press release willing to believe whomever and when they promise healing that's where i start to see the parallel so here you have this moment where you are working on yourself to some degree but you know as a listener when i see that when i'm hearing myself in that it's really reflective of what i'm seeing out there and you know i will say you know what we've gone through in the last four years with the snake oil salesman as i believe you use that phrase as well like how much of that starts to bleed in with you know what you're talking about with yourself though Oh my gosh. I mean, well, it's crazy that I think there are so many levels to the, to the, I don't want to say like disillusionment, but to the uh, like illusions that we build for ourselves and ourselves and continue to build because it makes us comfortable. Like I, you know, you're talking about the, the line about snake oil dealer, you know, um, like, I don't know. I, when I was touring the last two records, I thought so much about like how to express and advocate for principles that I thought were like ultimate good. Like, all right, well, we have a crazy person who is president, but maybe if like there's some ideal that if if we just this, if I could just get people to read this article or this book or listen to this history podcast, or if I could just get people to see that like this philosophy is freeing or idealistically good, then we could achieve some sort of healing. And that's not real. <laughs> like, And it hurts. It really hurts to, to realize that that is a disappearing horizon. Um, 
because then you're just left with doing the best you can amongst the wreckage that you see and and not having a realistic like projection for a future where everything is deus ex machina like like wizard of oz like solved right you know like and i thought i just kept thinking that for so long i was like okay well you know even with like christianity i was like okay like there are people who i disagree with like i call myself a person of faith but there are people who i disagree with in love (laughs) within the faith who believe things that are radically different from me and who seem to worship an entirely different ideal than i do and realizing that there's not like there's no thing we're gonna achieve together (laughs) that's right that everybody's like that's what that's what we've been trying to figure out we did it we figured it out um here's a perfect society here's the perfect way to treat your neighbor here's uh we finally figured out what god is like it's just that's not possible but people who both it's like this weird inverse dynamic where it's almost like the people selling you the answer or not even selling like it doesn't always have to be like this weird exchange where some guy on an infomercial at 3 a.m is trying to sell you holy water that'll fix your joints but like you know when people are telling you like I don't want to, okay, like, yoga's great, but, like, if you just do yoga, it'll, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Just drink more water. And I'm like, bro, there's not, that doesn't exist. And, yeah, I don't know, that's really painful to realize because those people want that to be true as well. Mm -hmm. They're not doing it just to deceive you out of spite. They're not, you know, if it's not for a financial gain, like the dude on the infomercial, it's just your friend telling you that being keto is going to heal you um, because they saw a documentary. Like they want that to be true too. They need that. They need something to be like the thing that helps. Everybody needs the thing that gets them to the next day. And when you realize there's no single answer, it's like the opposite of what you've been taught as a Western evangelical person, you know, and it's kind of life altering. (laughs) Um, Yeah. There's no Douglas Adams answer to meaning of life. The the 42 doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything at this point. I appreciate that scene so much more now because it's like you got to the supreme being and the supreme being told you they don't have any idea i was like that's so great (laughs) that's so free (laughs) um yeah like a good idea today that's that's why it's all here that's that's basically what it comes down to i did like um you know and i'll reference one other interview that you did i it may have been a podcast but you were talking about I'll I'll tie this around to what you're getting at. You know, there's not one answer, but I do think dismantling nationalism would be a step in the right direction because, you know, uh, you know, not even talking about false idols in a way of a God, just uh, false idol in a way of a nation or something. And I, I feel like that's when, when I heard you say that in a different interview, like that's the moment, that's my just drink more water. You know, that's, yeah. that's yeah. that thing right there. Yeah. But I mean, but again, it's painful. Mm-hmm. It's painful when someone tells you that, I mean, okay, so this is a giant, I don't want this to come across as like crass, but like when you are a child and you are convinced that there is a life-size rabbit that brings you candy (laughs) and then you find out that your parents have been lying to you, that's just a thing to make you feel good and it's kind of like imagined, but the candy's still there. So what's the answer? Your parents are still bringing you candy that's a much less sensational reality, but it's like feasible and workable. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and then you have, you're like, I cried. I got, when I was a little kid, I was devastated. I was like, how could you lie to me? There's no big rabbit. Um, but like, it's the same thing as like, and I have this conversation with my parents a lot who have, um, you know, they live in different cities and they, we have, we all have very different political views and we get to a place in a lot of our conversations where I, like, I'm 
tired of being ang like I don't know. I don't think it's useful when people shit on Republicans. Like, I, I don't think that's useful. Um, because those people, I mean, you know, there are factions of like incredibly racist white supremacists and stuff. Like, that's not okay. But then there's the reason why there are these people out here voting against their best interests and doing things that are like radically cruel to their neighbor is because they have been sold a lie. And I think the lie they've been sold also is like kind of predicated on a binary, a binary that doesn't exist or like a binary that doesn't matter. It's like, uh, I feel like a lot of people like in my family are they always give like a counter example of, well, we can't just be socialists and communists because look how that worked out for Russia and China. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> but do you think that like not having everything be as awful as it is right now means that we're going to oscillate to literally the furthest pole of the spectrum and be like an oppressive communist state right I also and it's like also that's not good either you know what i mean like there are people i for a long time i i don't know i and i hate to say this because i feel like centrism is really dangerous sometimes because it allows you to like just check out and be like Porque no los dos. Like, I don't see what the problem is. Just get along. When people are very vehement and they're very vehement about their ideologies because they're scared. Mm -hmm. And they're scared of, like, this thing that doesn't exist. Um, I mean, and of course I'm, well, never mind. I'm trying to be, like, polite and not, like, de degrade anyone. But, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's, like, when you realize that... <sighs> there's not like, what's the opposite of the thing that you think is awful. It's also awful. Mm -hmm. So you're basically stuck in the process of constant refinement. And if you don't understand, or if you don't accept that, then you just fight super hard to hold on to the thing that you believe, like instead of the Easter bunny, it's like this wild concept of, that a document written like 200 years ago should define the morality of an entire country when we like, because that's the way we've always done it. Mm -hmm. And like, there has to be some document that's true and that's right. And that we can return to like, it's the Bible or it's the constitution or it's a manifesto you read in college. I don't know what it is for you. You know what I mean? Um, but P yeah, it's just sad. Like, and I do it too. I do it constantly with all sorts of information. Um, so I'm not like saying, oh, how sad for you. Um, but like, yeah, it's sad. It's sad for me too. <laughs> Cause I am a human and I do it and it really sucks. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, you know, not the centrism, uh, although I've got plenty of my own thoughts about that, but you know, I, I do believe in a great balance of the universe. I was, I was laughing because I looked down and I saw that you and I are birthday wise separated. I'm the September 30th. I think you're September 29th. Wow. And I don't know that I always, yeah, I don't know that I always bought into, um, astrology and everything, but the whole thing about the scales and, and Libra and, and what it means, I think there's a lot of truth to that uh, side. Oh, of yes. No, I, I hate it because I do, I do find myself being annoyingly diplomatic. Like sometimes I'm just like, well, I, who can say? Like, <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, it's, it's big Libra energy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know we're running up against the clock here. I, I, I got to say again, what you do, by the way, is, is so powerful. And 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 what you're doing musically, uh, I know we didn't get to jump into a lot of that. Um, you know, I love seeing the progression. I love seeing how this is a bigger record. I love seeing what you did with a Blink-182 cover that seems to have led into all of this. <laughs> yeah, no, that one was wild. I just made that in my house, like in, like right here. I just, because I didn't have any other, you know, like w with the record, it's different. It's like, there was a whole bunch of time and I was like, how could percussion serve the songs? And I'm going to like 
step outside of this, you know, say like I had an arbitrary conviction that as an artist, my skill was living in minimalism mm -hmm. and making things sparse on purpose to challenge myself as a songwriter. And I don't know why I thought that drums were off limits for me. Now I was in a band in college. Now there's drums on the record, you know, it's just like, but yeah, the Blink-182 cover was fun. When, uh, when he says earth is dying, help me Jesus. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I feel that. <laughs> it's a deeper song than I remember. That's for sure. That's uh, and you brought that like, out. You did. Yeah. I was like, dang, when I was a kid, I was just like angry anti-establishment listening to this. And now I'm like, earth is actually dying. And <laughs> although kids are victims in this story is a funny line that's <laughs> funny. anyway sorry yeah no thank it's you. all right thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk about all this today congratulations on this record i mean you write masterpieces i i honestly mean that and um <laughs> and I, i'm told by the way uh jason isbal on twitter says to give you a virtual high five today that he's in love with your music too so it's what i'm in love with jason isbal i like i it's not that i hate twitter i just like try to stay away from it as much as I can. But mm -hmm. now I'm going to get on Twitter and say, what's up to Jason Isbell? Cause I Check love, I love that dude. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right, Julian Baker. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one.